Managing Director of Hive Innovation Community, uh, located in Munich. And I would like to talk about combining crowdsourcing more integrated with crowdfunding. And um, maybe it's uh, worth to consider a bit where we are coming from, so the evolution of crowdsourcing. So years ago, as Katja just said, uh, some pioneers started with the entire open innovation crowdsourcing uh, topic. Then some companies started to, to use those methods and approaches, so they did some pilots that tried to, to gain experience, etc. And as Katja just said, and uh, thank you for, for the support on the stage, so right now we have the feeling from the from Hive point of view that open innovation, crowdsourcing, and of course also crowdfunding um, is developing into the new normal of, of in doing innovation management, of doing innovation management in a more open um, way. And what comes along with this development is that, of course, the roles and responsibilities change, for example, different job titles uh, develop. Open innovation crowdsourcing is done in more sustainable ways. We see much more uh, crowdsourcing campaigns or even programs over years. So it's not just one single um, project. And one further aspect, and that's, that's the part I will talk about, is that um, crowdsourcing is not longer um, linked only to the innovation part. So one is the extent into the funding, into the financial uh, part of a company or a function of a company. It also goes into crowd marketing, crowd HR, would say, so engage the employees. So there are many developments um, which are really interesting, which somehow have the uh, crowdsourcing aspect um, as a foundation. Maybe a second general thought at the beginning, uh, what is really interesting from our point of view, that crowdsourcing was in the past always about the bazaar logic. So it's chaotic, it's, it's, it's uh, colorful, it's heterogeneous. And um, if we talk about crowdfunding and bringing those things together, and we, if we talk about really going um, along the entire open innovation or innovation channel, then we, in, the, in the science we talk about more cathedral approaches. So it's much more structured. You have all the um, all the rules and everything which has to, to fit in, in certain processes. So I think for you as a crowd, as a uh, crowd interested in crowdsourcing and crowdfunding, it's also worth thinking about ways how this more uh, heterogeneous approach and approach which fosters um, creativity can also work within more structured processes. And of course, as um, just uh, the Katja and, and, and the moderator talked about, the ecosystem is expanding. So there are much more and different players which, which companies can integrate in their, um, in their innovation um, development. And this is true from a crowdsourcing, but also a crowdfunding perspective. And in, during the last couple of years, we did many, many crowdsourcing projects and we did many, many crowdfunding projects. And most of the time, they were somehow separated. Sometimes even different departments uh, were in charge of those different projects. So we thought that it, of course, makes totally sense to have all uh, those experts and employees, but also the customers involved in the idea and idea enrichment phase. But also, um, we could use experts, users from the external perspective, but also internally, the employees, to really further pursue ideas and opportunities to fund uh, ideas and also to really try to get the idea or the concept into a prototyping phase and then um, really realize it and bring it to the market. And from this perspective, we thought, okay, maybe it's, it's worth it to combine those two um, aspects in, in more detail or uh, integrate it more um, closely. So what I would like to explain you, uh, show you in a couple of uh, minutes is two perspectives, basically. One is the integration of um, crowdsourcing and crowdfunding from an external perspective, so integrating the customers uh, in an integrated um, format. And the second approach and second case also is more focusing on the internal perspective. So we did a case, uh, we're doing a case with Siemens. Um, where we have a crowdsourcing platform which has a second phase, an internal crowdfunding. So, this is really animated right now, so we go into the, the crowdfunding uh, and crowdsourcing um, 
topic from an external point of view. So of course, the first phase is, as you know, feedback, getting connections, generating ideas, and then going to the crowdfunding approach, we talk about uh, developing the pro prototypes, validate the prototypes, get funding, have a little market test, do some marketing for your product, uh, even generate some lead customers, and of course, uh, reduce your, your risk regarding um, the investment. And the example I would like to share with you is Open Innovation South Tyrol. It's an open innovation or crowdsourcing platform, which now, since one year, has also the crowdfunding um, possibility on the platform combined. So you see in the header the, the little uh, red navigation button. This is the entire crowdsourcing environment. And the little blue button at the, at the navigation is the entire crowdfunding um, area, basically. And just to show you, in the past, where we had no crowdfunding on the platform, we generated so interesting uh, outcomes for our clients on this platform. This was a little um, um, craftsman in, in South Tyrol who had the challenge to develop new ideas regarding uh, souvenirs made out of wood, and he got nearly 300 ideas, and he was not able to realize them because he had not enough resources to do that. So he had all those great ideas here, or the next example, uh, somebody or uh, other company is SME ask for uh, concepts for modular wooden house. So also in this case, they had final concepts, evaluated everything in there, but they lacked the resources from a personal uh, point of view, but also from, from a money or financial point of view. And maybe the third example, because I talked to, to a guy yesterday evening at the leaders' uh, VIP dinner who, who does some um, children uh, bed um, development design also. So uh, this was the output from this little uh, contest here on the Open Innovation South Tyrol platform. And um, also in this case, they made it to the market finally after a couple of years, but our hypothesis was that it would have been much faster and much more efficient for this little company if they uh, could have used the crowdfunding opportunity. So what we did uh, after three or four years of crowdsourcing only, only we um, yeah, added basically from a technical point of view the crowdfunding module into this platform. So Dino Unterstützung, you're so your supporter. And um, right now I can show you how this looks like. So you have now the, the um, the, the different projects on the platform where people can now spend their money, still evaluate, still comment on the, on the product basically, but also invest money and basically uh, pre-purchase uh, the product if it comes to the market finally. And right now we have uh, already two or even three projects sold out basically. And uh, yeah, just to show it in, in more detail, this is the Kraxel board. It's a climbing board, which were developed on the crowdsourcing platform and was now 110% uh, financed on, on this um, crowdfunding um, area on the platform. So I think this is a really good opportunity for crowdsourcing in the future, not have a strict cut between crowdsourcing on the one hand and then go on Kickstarter and Indiegogo, but maybe think more about ways to really integrate this, to, to use the same crowd to first ideate and then really go into the financing and uh, go into the, the market direction, basically. When we talk about internal, the internal version of this, so if a company uses crowdsourcing internally within their employees uh, or different business units, um, then some things have to change or we have different opportunities which we can take um, if, we, if we do it internally. Um, basically, this, the, the, the logic is the same. We have, of course, the, the idea, uh, ideate and enrichment phase, and you have the crowdfunding phase. Um, in the funding phase, it's more about getting funding and getting supporters, so getting uh, support for, for the prototype, but also for the finalization. So we have typically a smaller way, or sm a smaller version where you just can get help from a colleague or can get some little money, basically, a few hundred or thousand euros in order to develop your prototype. But it could also be that you have already the entire project set, everything is settled, and you need half a million, for example. And, and then it's more about getting a huge amount of money funding or get somehow more management support to really uh, get your idea or concept going. And um, therefore, we develop basically two 
persona within those communities. So we have one, the, the innovator, the innovator track. So it's more the guy who has the idea. And um, this guy could just get some help from colleagues. So he has the money on his virtual wallet, basically on the platform, which he can spend to, for his prototype, for example, to buy some material, to go into a copy shop, print, it, uh, print a 3D model, for example. But this is more on, the, on, a, on a smaller level. And he could also, of course, go to other colleagues and asking them that they, uh, whether they can support him. And then we have the investor track. The investor is more the guy who is maybe not that creative, but maybe has a better overview. He is able to, to judge somehow which ideas have with what kind of uh, potential, what is a good idea, what fits to the company, etc. And this guy um, can now support the innovator, basically, with the money, but also with his network, for example, or with his support more on a, on a network basis. And um, this is really interesting because then we have at least the chance to involve more people than it was possible in the past when we just talked to all those creative people in the R&D departments and maybe some selected experts. And finally, we then went with the concept to the management boards and the decision boards and pitched the, the ideas and they just said, okay, it's, it's good or it's bad. But in this case, it's really more transparent. The management or other uh, investors, there could be also some middle management, normal people, uh, can spend their money. And in the case of Siemens, um, and I jump over the next two slides because I explained this already. In the case of Siemens, it's, it's uh, developed in a way that they put a certain amount of their innovation budget on this platform and uh, divide them in the innovation budget to the different uh, digital wallets, basically, of, of the people. So uh, around uh, 100,000 um, people are able to spend money and this is real money, so that's real innovation budget. And if the projects get f funded, so if they reach the, um, the, the, the stated amount of money they need, then the management decides whether they double or even uh, extend the entire innovation budget on top in, in order to really get this project going. And I think that this approach, in a, from an internal perspective, of course, but also if you think back to the uh, to the uh, um, Open Innovation Thousand role, that this is really one step further than not just motivating and empowering people to support the company in developing ideas, enriching concepts, evaluating concepts, etc., but also really do it. So coach and educate people how to develop prototypes, how to further um, develop the prototype into a real MVP or real product to collaborate, to get some first market insights, and hopefully that's still a hypothesis that maybe this integrated uh, approach is able to deliver or increase the chance that uh, more disruptive ideas get funded and get visibility and are not somehow uh, deleted or somehow uh, blocked by, by maybe the middle management or the management who has, there's still another hypothesis, maybe some different uh, goals and, 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 and aims uh, to achieve. So I think there's a lot uh, still to do and to improve and to develop. So I'm, I'm open for, for discuss the discussion later on. So we have our, our table out there. and. Um, Hopefully, there are three questions for me, which I can answer. So thank you very much for your attention, and uh, I'm looking forward to discuss with you.